So we're taking a look at valuations. I know you look at growth versus value. I mean, today, this morning, I saw records for the S&P, the NASDAQ Composite, the Russell, the Dow Jones Transportation Average. Uh, what does that tell you about valuation? Um, well, I think, you know, a lot of those areas are really starting to starting to emerge. Um, you know, last year, the, the big trade was the large tech uh, growth trade, the trade that we're, we're uh, identifying as the fat game trade, Facebook, Apple, Tesla, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Um, you know, those have had a really good run, but I don't think they're really where it's going to be at with regards to the opening of the economy. I mean, those were those were great when we were stuck at home, you know, being able to order from Amazon. But I think the places that are, you know, really going to take off at this point, and we're even starting to see some rotation that now are more sectors like energy, which is up by 10% for the year. Small caps, you know, they're up close to 5% for the year versus like large growth. You know, that's only up about up less than 1% for the year. So, you know, I think some of those areas are going to be more beneficial as the economy starts to reopen here. So how would you get into energy, for example? I mean, how would you do that? Uh, well, in our, our own portfolio, we do own Master Limited Partnerships, uh, Master Limited Partnership uh, Index ETF. Um, you know, I won't get into any specifics, but, you know, that's a good place to own it. Pipelines, that kind of thing. Um, you know, not only are they still down on a relative basis, energy still hasn't fully recovered. Um, but, you know, the great thing is you're getting in a discount and you're also getting in at a time where they're paying great dividends. So, you know, I always talk about and I've talked about this right. in the past in your show. These things pay you to wait. What's the story behind small caps as we're seeing a Russell at new highs, of course, as well? Well, again, the same thing uh, goes for, for small caps. Um, you know, they're still down from, from 2018. There's still some opportunity to get in there. The valuations are still, real, still low on a relative basis. Uh, and the other part of it is, again, you know, they're also paying a good dividend. So, you know, it's, it's the same situation as pipelines. They're paying you to wait. And, you know, these are areas of the world, especially on the value side of small cap, that you're going to see uh, having more success as the economy starts to reopen. Even just this week, Russell is up 6%. And the S&P is up one and a half percent. So clearly the small caps are outpacing already. Uh, I just think, you know, from a, from a valuation standpoint, they really haven't had that opportunity to run like we've seen with the, some of the mega tech, mega cap tech companies. Um, you know, I still think there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, you know, if I I'll tell you, I look at probably 30 portfolios a month uh, just doing analysis. And I find that 99.9% .9 of the time they're all over underweighted in small caps. I mean, it's just. Like a, it's almost uncanny, you know. You see most of the weighting on the big caps, but you don't see much in the small caps. So I think it's a really under undervalued and underappreciated asset class. Do you like some tech stocks? I mean, everybody continues to talk about technology and cloud and uh, you know software and, and semiconductors. I mean, you know, are you left out if you're not in those areas? Yeah, I mean, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't own those in, in your portfolio. Uh, you know, I, I certainly believe in owning more of a broad based index versus trying to pick out individual names, um, you know, owning owning an index or, you know, owning an ETF that focuses more on growth versus just tech. You know, it, it's like one of those things, you know, you never really want to overweight your portfolio in any particular area just because, as the old saying goes, past performance is 100 percent indicative of past performance. What are your expectations uh, for the markets overall for 2021? Uh, I definitely think value is going to be the place to be for 2021. You know, I think owning other asset categories like international, uh, emerging markets, uh, real estate, those are all going to be great places that really haven't, didn't really take off last year. I think those are going to be the places to be for this year.